should put my sunglasses on. All right. Well, everyone, uh, thanks for coming out. Um, we're going to talk about digital transformation and uh, a blueprint for survival. So we'll offer some, some uh, insight into how you can leverage um, DevOps and some of the um, processes around people, processes, tools, and technology to make that transformation over to, uh, to digital transformation a much easier process. Uh, we'll go and introduce each other, and, and then we'll get right into the content. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm Scott Bills I'm with EMC Global Services, and I lead up our application uh, transformation practice. Hi, I'm uh, Bart Driscoll. I lead up our DevOps practice within Global Services. And I'm uh, Jeff Olson. I'm an Offer Development Lead in our Global Services Cloud Portfolio Group. So when we think of digital transformation, uh, you know, we heard a lot about um, digital transformation and how it applies uh, really in day one of this OpenStack Summit. Um, you know, and it's really important that we, we understand fundamentally, you know, what is driving digital transformation? What is some of these new paradigm shifts that are causing organizations to really adopt these new methodologies, new agile processes, and these new agile technologies to really help transform them? And when you think of it, it really boils down to you know, four main pillars, which is uh, mobile, cloud, big data, and social. Um, and, and by the way that we're always being connected in today, um, is really that iterative process, that instant feedback, and having that information at our tips that really helps drive a successful transformation. But really, as what we'll get into uh, further on is that um, you know, technology isn't just necessarily the end all, be all to really uh, transform yourself. Um, you know, things like DevOps and transforming your existing application portfolio are, are really important to that process. Um, so really, when organiza organizations think about, well, what do I need to do to be successful, and, and how can I go down this, 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 this path to, to really digitally transform, um, really, their, their main focus is you know, they want to spot new opportunities. Not only spot new opportunities, but be able to help predict them as much as possible. Um, and it's all about delivering that personal experience. So you know, we all sit here on our phones throughout the day. Um, and we're getting instant feedback, whatever we're, we're interacting with. Um, but really, you know, in order to get those results back, um, a, a successful uh, organization really has to be able to, to innovate in that agile way. Um, you think about the long uh, processes, and, and I think they talked about 44 days or 42 days in the key, key one note. Wouldn't, be possible in this new age where we're pulling this data instantaneously, analyzing that data, and giving it back to, uh, to the customer, which really you know, drives that I want to operate in real time. Um, and at the same time, it's really being able to demonstrate that transparency and be able to trust that your data is secure as you're interacting with it and getting it back in real time. So, like I mentioned before, right? It's broken down really applications uh, where you know they're at your fingertips, right? Companies like Tesla, um, you know, I, I think they're the first organization or first company where you could pretty much pre-order a car online. Uh, it's pretty amazing. To you know, I think we all probably in here might have a Nest in our in our in our homes, um, and it all starts really with that application. But when you write these applications and when you're interacting with these applications. It's, it's, it's the data that, that you're collecting, right? And, and the data is help driving, you know, what you're gonna do with that information, and how you're gonna analyze that information, and how you're exactly gonna pass it back to improve on whatever information you're getting back uh, to your end users. Um, and really, by creating this type of cycle, or this type of flow of, of bringing in data from your end users and analyzing and creating new insights, you're really focusing on creating speed. Right? And it's all about that iterative process and speed to help you do that. Um, but of course, you know, there's, there's definitely a challenge with, some, with digital transformation. Um, I don't know if Bart, you wanted to go ahead and, and jump on this one. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, 
So one of the things that we find when we're working with customers around digital transformation is really this lack of a holistic vision, right? There are typically three key parts to digital transformation. One is around the data, a second being around customers, and then a third being around those internal processes that ultimately help enable you to actualize wins uh, in that customer and data side. Um, you know, so without having this vision, it's actually really difficult to start uh, building the right solutions uh, on the back end in order to be able to support uh, digital transformation. That kind of walks into the identifying the use cases. Right? If you don't really understand your customer, whether it's an internal or external customer, uh, it makes it really difficult to provide the correct services and the correct level of interaction with those services to those end users. Um, you know, we find one of the other common problems is a burden of technical debt, right? Most large enterprises, you know, have been around for 20, 30 years. They've got applications that are equally that old. And, you know, as a result, there have been a lot of decisions made, great ones at the time, you know, that are, that are slowing down or, or impeding how quickly you can add change. You know, part of it's inflexible architectures, part of it's very complex dependencies, um, you know, and some of it is just old, old platforms that just aren't designed for this kind of new digital world. Um, you know, one of the other things that we see with digital transformation is that it's a very pervasive change in the organization, right? This isn't something that's just IT or just marketing or the business. It, it really touches all aspects uh, of the enterprise. And you know, as a result, it makes it really difficult to coordinate, particularly when you're looking at you know, 17 or 23 different stakeholders that are all required to help make decisions in this process. And that kind of leads to the last one here around organizational inertia. Um, you know, change is hard, and for some people it's downright scary, right? So introducing these new concepts and these new ideas takes time. Uh, you, need to have, you need to create that space and allow people to build trust uh, in these new operating models and these new tools uh, as you're starting to move towards digital transformation. So really getting to the meat and potatoes, um, you know, really the blueprint we've laid out is you can think of it broken down into four main uh, categories, uh, starting from bottom left to, to right. Um, and it really starts with having an agile infrastructure, right? Having something like OpenStack as your underlying infrastructure resources that can scale uh, is really going to be that uh, beginning point that you want to make sure that when you're developing these new applications or um, using a platform like Cloud Foundry or Pivotal Cloud Foundry uh, that you can really start leveraging that developer ecosystem. Um, so we'll start with you know agile infrastructure and we'll get into that developer ecosystem and then get into okay well you know once you have these tools and have these technologies up and running it really comes down to well then what right just because you have these technologies installed and, and running doesn't necessarily mean you actually know how to use them. And it's really where that people and process comes into play around changing your culture uh, by leveraging things like DevOps. But I think in the reality of it is, is that a lot of organizations have these applications or existing applications that they need to leverage, right? So some of these, I think they call it mode one and mode two applications. Um, that, that they want to leverage. Not every organization can start net new or start in a greenfield environment. So we'll get into how uh, you know, we help customers transform existing applications and integrate it into existing tool chain and, and processes and so on and so forth. So ag agile infrastructure. So like I mentioned before, right? Um, it's, you can think of it as that baseline or that that uh, fundamental environment that you need to have up and running in order to allow uh, everything above the stack or the abstraction layer to take advantage of. Um, and when you think of things like agile infrastructure, um, it, you really want to have it programmable, um, which is you want to treat that infrastructure as code. You want to limit the amount of manual processes that you can bring into it. And you want to templatize as much as you can so that it can scale out automatically. Um, definitely want to have it as multi-tenant and multi-services. So what I mean by multi-services is that you can think of things like Amazon Web Services, right? When you just log in, you're not, you're not getting just compute. You're getting uh, compute networking and storage resources. You're getting things like a developer platform. You're getting things like object storage. Um, you're getting things like um, um, uh, uh, content distribution networks and so on and so forth. And these are all the different services that you want to leverage in an elastic type way 
in order for you to take advantage of that underlying resource. And of course, it has to be economical, right? So commodity, hardware, um, software-defined uh, uh, services, as well as leveraging open source technologies is really going to see, really going to help you understand where you're getting that value from. Uh, it doesn't make the most sense if you're spending a lot of money on some of these underlying infrastructures um, and you're kind of getting caught up in the procurement of, of resources as it moves through that, that purchase chain within that organization. Um, and developer ecosystem. Sure. So sitting on top of that um, agile, infra agile infrastructure is what we like to refer to as that developer ecosystem. And as you remember, I mentioned a little earlier, it's really all about knowing your customer. So developers really don't want to muck around in the storage and network layers of your data center. Um, they would much prefer to be writing code, building new features, and getting those features out into production. So you know, one of the things to consider as part of your digital transformation and as part of building out uh, this set of services is you know, understanding what it is developers need access to. Um, Using a platform like Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, you get a lot of really robust features out of the box around health monitors and container provisioning, um, you know, as well as access to a bunch of frameworks that will actually enable developers to start writing code quicker. Um, you know, in the end, that's really what that developer ecosystem is all about. It's how can I provide my development and testing resources with the right tools and the right access to services like a database or a messaging layer without having to have them go and configure it. Um, you know, ba basically it just, it, it allows them to focus their attention on, on what they're truly interested in, in providing value. So kind of moving into the next phase, which is really talking about that cultural change through DevOps. Um, you know, I know it's already come up twice in this session, but the, uh, during the keynote earlier, you know, when they were talking about the company that made the big investment to uh, improve their, their uh, deployment cycle time, and it went from 44 days down to 42 days, right? Everything that we've talked about so far is about implementing that tools, implementing those tools. If we're not thinking about how those tools um, are mapped to the process, or the sets of processes that we use to develop and deploy uh, code into production, then we're going to have a lot of trouble with adoption, and we're not going to start to see the acceleration and throughput that we're really hoping to get through this transformation. So when we're talking about uh, the cultural changes through DevOps, you know, uh, one of the key underlying tenets is automate everything. Um, automate your infrastructure provisioning, automate your deployment chains, automate your testing, um, automate configuring your monitoring systems. You know, really anywhere where there's a repeatable task that's happening as part of your uh, software development lifecycle or your, your uh, release management process, automate it. Um, but it's not just writing scripts, right? We want these scripts to be managed by policy. Uh, you know, most large enterprises have a strong enterprise architecture and, and governance pro program in place. We want to make sure that you know, some of the important assets and IP from those systems are embedded into the tool chains that we're building as part of DevOps, right? It's not about just going fast. It's about going fast, but having confidence that what we're deploying uh, is going to service the, the needs of our customer. Um, the extensible platform. So I talked a little bit about this on the slide before. You know, this is really all about that ecosystem, understanding that complex portfolios are going to require multiple tools to do the same thing. Um, you know, I'd probably use Jenkins Maven for a uh, Java build, and I would use MS Build for .NET. You know, both tools do the same thing, but if I were to uh, use MS Build on a Java application, uh, not so good, right? So we want to be able to have that flexibility to support multiple tools, recognizing that we're going to have these complex portfolios. I think another key cultural change with respect to DevOps is this concept of transparency, right? For most large enterprises, the software development lifecycle and your release management process is a black box. You know, requirements kind of go in, six months later, something comes out, you hope it works, it gets deployed to production, breaks a few things, everybody spends a long weekend fixing it, uh, and then you get it into production and people start using it, right? DevOps wants to, wants to kind of take the cover off that and really give you some transparency into how changes move through the process, how long each step takes, What's the success rate of each of these different steps? 
so that you can start collecting data around where to best make investments moving forward uh, with respect to in implementing new tools and optimizing your processes. Um, DevOps is really focused on value. So it's based on lean, it's based on agile, uh, which have both been around in, the, in, in IT for a while. But you know, the whole goal is, is how can we create value faster? It's not how can I write code faster, it's not how can I create an environment faster, it's how can I bring all of these disparate pieces together and create a working application in production that will create value for the enterprise as whole. You know, and it does this by using highly collaborative and cross-functional teams. You know, the goal is, isn't to make generalists across your entire enterprise. The goal really is, you know, how can I bring that expertise and that experience together to build a solution that's really going to address the needs of the organization? So we do talk a lot about tooling with respect to DevOps, and it is a really important piece, because really without it, it's really difficult to accelerate. Um, but one of the things that we want to make sure that we're careful of is that when we're building and selecting tools is that we're creating tools that are going to be able to work and integrate with each other. It's all about that API library. So I do want to create a common uh, workflow or pipeline that will manage change, whether it's an infrastructure change or an application change. And then I want to be able to integrate tools into that pipeline to be able to accelerate that end-to-end -end flow. All right, so when we think about digital transformation, there's the, the pieces around tooling, culture, uh, DevOps that you know, we talked about, but one of the, the biggest challenges a lot of our you know, larger enterprise um, clients in particular face is what to do with the existing uh, portfolio. And how do you leverage uh, DevOps, uh, microservices, um, continuous innovation or continuous delivery release models um, to unlock value from the existing portfolio? So if you think about your typical an enterprise, they'll have a whole set of legacy monolithic, you know, applications built on really high cost kind of old platforms, um, which is a problem. But at the same time, there's a lot of IP that's been developed over the years that are that are in those applications that you want to unlock uh, as well. So a big part of uh, the the challenge for digital transformation is taking a look at your portfolio and figuring out, you know, what do you want to put into a transformed DevOps type model. It seems relatively straightforward. But you know, you take a financial services, um, you know, global financial services institution, for example. You know, they're going to have consumer apps, they're going to have commercial apps, they're going to have trading apps, they're going to have core financial systems. Not all of those are um, applicable or appropriate for a DevOps um, type model, or will have the same value derived from you know continuous innovation and leveraging those types of, of tools and processes. So a critical um, first step is, is taking a look at the you know, existing portfolio and figuring out where uh, DevOps can really help you unlock value. And when you're talking about application portfolios in the thousands across both COTS and um, um, you know, bespoke applications, that's, that's typically a non-trivial um, task. And one of the kind of first steps that you know, we see organizations that are really aggressive about digital transformation doing is taking a look at that portfolio and figuring out where the value really exists from uh, digital transformation. So if you take a look at new app development, you know, of course you're going to want to leverage DevOps and um, PaaS and microservices to develop your applications in a new way. That's, that's really a no-brainer, right? But the question around what you do with the existing portfolio tends to be a little bit more complex and involves a whole set of issues around you know, the business importance, the business criticality of the app, how it's implemented, how it's deployed, the cost of the platform, strategic importance of the app going forward, um, you know, the, uh, the usage demographics, a whole set of factors that will lead you to take an application and say, you know what, it might make sense to actually modernize and rewrite this using a DevOps um, kind of transformed um, you know, process. Um, others, it may make more sense just to migrate, kind of lift and shift as is to you know, a cloud platform or infrastructure as a, a service environment. Others, you want to retire. And some, you may just want to keep as is, but you know, maybe expose a little bit differently um, to other applications or you know, leverage a, a data fabric um, to transform those applications in a little bit different way. 
But in any case, you know, the, the, the key is to understand really what the sources of value are for transforming, understand you know, where the value might be in your portfolio, and then really think about what, it a, what an appropriate um, attractive strategy is uh, for transforming you know, the existing portfolio as part of your uh, broader uh, digital transformation effort. So I guess really before kind of closing, we just wanted to share um, a case study that uh, we've been working with a customer on. Uh, this is one of the, actually this is the largest uh, global bank. You know, they currently have got over 30,000 IT professionals working, seven different divisions, supporting over 6,000 application development projects. And um, you know, this customer has a problem. Despite their size and their success, um, you know, they're realizing that their ability to generate revenue um, costs more than it does their competitors. So you know, basically, they're not as profitable as they'd like to be. So the company has um, made a very significant investment in you know, developing some new products and new customer channels uh, in order to drive some new revenue. Uh, but at the same time, they're really taking a laser focus internally around operational efic efficiency. You know, how can they start to drive down that net operating cost? So, we started working uh, with the bank in, in early 2015, and you know what we've been doing with them is you know first aligning a lot of their key stakeholders around what their development and delivery practices are, and you know taking a closer look at what some of the tools do with respect to infrastructure automation, continuous integration, and continuous delivery. Um, and you know where we've started is by building out a pilot, uh, a pilot continuous delivery pipeline, and we're starting to build out a framework that's going to integrate some of the infrastructure automation services um, that they're building as part of an uh, infrastructure provisioning and management work stream. And the whole goal here is to really embed the tools from both of these work streams together in an active development project. And you know, part of the, the reason that we're trying to embed it in part of an active development project is so as this development project progress, we can start capturing some proof points around where these technologies are working, how we're embedding them with the teams, what some of the new practices, processes, and methods are that uh, we're developing. And we can begin to embed them in the global software delivery management program, which is a much larger top-down initiative to uh, simplify operations and reduce risk at the, at the bank. Um, you know, what we've been doing with them to date is providing coaching services, technical experts, and some implementation services to really help build out that uh, initial pilot and start training local internal champions that are going to help radiate this solution um, as we move forward. You know, interestingly enough, the, the bank, like a lot of the customers that we work with, you know, kind of had an early realization uh, when we started doing our advisory service with them, and that was that they really weren't good at doing software development. Um, you know, they want to be more like a modern software development company, even though they're huge. Um, and so you know, what we've been able to do is kind of systematically work through some of those problems and create a framework for addressing them by both introducing infrastructure automation tools and practices and integrating those with some software development tools and practices. So. Um, pretty much wraps it up for, t for today. Before you go, um, you know, if you want to learn more about what we're doing around the digital transformation space, uh, definitely come visit us at the booth. Um, also, you know, these two guys, uh, not including myself, uh, have, have some great blog posts on our uh, EMC Global Services in Focus um, webpage. I uh, highly suggest you take a look at it in, in, when you have time. Uh, they've write some great things around many of the topics that we've covered today, both around DevOps, around agile technologies, as well as transforming uh, application portfolios. Um, so what we'll do is we'll close it out here. We'll open up to questions. And I know we ha do have a raffle um, for an Echo, correct? Yeah, Amazon yeah. Echo. Amazon Echo. So we are going to, and we, just and we just have one. So does anyone have any questions before we? Do you have like some sort of an upfront um, assessment process that you use, like kind of going in, like if the you know clients don't 
already know exactly what they want to do, which is probably most of the cases, where you determine like which aspects of these trans these transformation elements, you know, how and where they apply, like some sort of a regular structured kind of assessment. So are approach. you are you um, are you talking about from an infrastructure or from a uh, DevOps perspective or the kind of the whole big picture? Because we like do any any of it, yeah. Okay. Like like where you yeah. start to determine, you know, the Absolutely. opportunities and the applications, how to to come in and what to recommend and sure and stuff. Yeah. So so really that type of service uh, that 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 um, you know and those capabilities that you just mentioned is really how we try and help our customers. So the reality is um, our customers are learning this just as much as yeah. you know yeah. some of the vendors are. So, you know, we want to help our customers through that entire journey, right? Not just about selling them technology. It's not just about um, standing up that technology, but it's really helping advise them what is the right strategy they need to be looking at to make that informed decision. So, um, you know, really we have a, a, a set of advisory services that range from, you know, on the infrastructure level, um, you know, things like OpenStack and, and PCF or CF, um, all the way to kind of the DevOps side of things. Um, so we will work with the customer and really kind of gauge where they're at from a maturity perspective. Um, and once we can gauge where they're at from a maturity perspective, wh whether we need to address it more at the infrastructure layer or a certain technology at the infrastructure layer or further up the stack, uh, we're going we're gonna to help that out or help the customer kind of see that journey through. Um, and then we can take that all the way through, you know, deploying um, that, that specific uh, solution or product to even helping manage it. If, if, they don't have the skills or the cycles to do it themselves. Yeah, I think one thing I'd add to that is we do have some really kind of lightweight early workshops up front that are you know fairly broad in scope um, that are really designed to help map out your current maturity as it relates to modern application development and digital transformation. Uh, we also have another one around um, IT, uh, general IT transformation. Um, and so, you know, both of those can kind of provide that baseline uh, to make that determination on what's the best next step. You know, do we want to focus more on DevOps? Do we want to focus more on infrastructure automation, et cetera? Any other questions? Okay. Shook, floor is all yours. All mine. All right. Who wants to pick? You want to pick? I'll pick. Last three numbers, five, four, four. Five, four, four. Come on down. Oh, I read that backwards. <laughs> cool. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Th thanks a lot, everyone. Take care and enjoy the rest of your time here in Austin.